Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max are both the flagship phones from both Samsung and Apple. I thought we'd compare not only the physical parts of the phone, but the overall processor, speed, how they handle heat, the cameras, and much more. Now, the first thing is they're very similarly priced. We have up to one terabyte options in both, and they're about $1,600 or so depending on which device you get, but depending where you live, it can vary. And also there's different deals where you live as well. Now, the overall build of them is very different. The S23 Ultra has aluminum as far as the overall frame of the device, and it has glass on the back and front. I actually have a skin on the back of this S23 Ultra. This was the red version. You can see some of that here, but the overall build of it is very nice. It feels very substantial, very well built, and it's very similar to what we had in previous years. So along the outside edge, it's aluminum. On the top, we have a little microphone. And then on the side, on the right, we have a volume rocker, a power sleep wake button, as well as a millimeter wave antenna. On the bottom, we have a SIM card tray, which the iPhone does not have in the United States. We have a couple microphones as well as USB-C and then a speaker. And then something the iPhone doesn't support is a stylus or an S Pen. So that's something that's just built right into this nice feeling phone. It's surprising they can actually fit that though. So that's a nice addition that you get that you don't get on the iPhone. We also have Gorilla Glass Victus on the front, which seems to hold up a little bit better as far as scratches in my experience with the 15 Pro Max, where it just doesn't seem to hold up as well with scratches. In fact, I have a screen protector on this one because my 15 Pro had a scratch right after I took it out of the box. Shortly after, somehow some scratches appeared on it, so I put a screen protector on my devices right away. Also in drop tests, they seem to handle it a little bit differently as well. And that could be due to the overall frame. Like I said, on the S23 Ultra, it's aluminum, but on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, now it's titanium, which is super strong, but also would mean some of the impact from drops would maybe transfer to the glass a little bit differently. That again, we have glass on the front that Apple calls ceramic shield and glass on the back as well. In general, it's been pretty durable for me, but you could chip the outside finish on different colored ones. This is the natural titanium, but if you have the blue titanium or any of the others, black titanium, you could actually chip this finish a little bit if you were to drop it on tile, but the same sort of drop would actually ding up the finish on the S23 Ultra as well. The iPhone hasn't changed much around the outside edge, except for a couple things. We have a power sleep wake button on the right hand side, millimeter wave antenna on the bottom. We have a speaker. We also have a USB-C port, which is really nice that we have this year and a microphone as well. On the other side, we have our volume buttons and we have an all new action button. This is assignable to different functions. I have it set up for the flashlight, but it's nice just to have something other than maybe a silent switch. If you want to silence the phone, it's actually in the software now in the control panel. Now, other than that, it's pretty much the same, but they did round the corners with the titanium. So there's a little bit of a difference here, but nothing huge. The S23 Ultra comes in at 8.25 ounces or 234 grams, where the 15 Pro Max is 7.81 ounces or 221 grams. Both have very nice displays, 6.8 inches on the S23, 6.7 on the 15 Pro Max. Now, as far as the overall screens, they both look great. They're both made by Samsung. Both have great viewing angles. The iPhone screen is built to Apple's specifications by Samsung, but both look great overall. And both of them in sunlight, basically the same. You won't notice much of a difference, but they're very nice to look at. And again, the S23 Ultra seems to be a little bit smoother, just going side by side. And you can see that here at 240 frames per second. See if one looks more smooth to you than the other, but it gives you an idea of what it looks like. Both phones utilize PWM or pulse width modulation to control brightness. As you slide the brightness up or down, it actually increases the rate at which it flashes the display. You can't see this with your eyes, but it can cause eye strain in about one in 10 people. That typically happens to me. You can either have eye strain, feel nauseated, or just kind of have discomfort when you're looking at the display. That happens to me on the S23 Ultra. And again, at 240 frames per second, you'll see here, you can see that pretty clearly on the S23 Ultra where it's flashing at a lower rate, where the 15 Pro Max is at at a higher rate that's closer to DC dimming around 480 Hertz above 39% brightness. So it's much easier on the eyes in my experience, although both look great, you definitely notice the eye strain if you're sensitive to that on the S23. 
As far as overall battery life, well, the battery in the S23 Ultra is 5,000 milliamp hours, which is bigger than the 15 Pro Max at 4,441 milliamp hours. Despite that, due to its processor, we'll talk about a little bit later, it seems the 15 Pro Max will outlast the S23 Ultra in most tests you see online. So if you go search for a test, you'll find that about 30 to 60 minutes extra is what you get with the 15 Pro Max over the S23 Ultra. So despite its slightly smaller battery, it seems to be a little bit more efficient due to the processor inside. Now, before we take a look at speed and other things, let's talk about the cameras as that's a big reason people pick one phone over the other. The S23 Ultra has a 12 megapixel front camera at f2.2. It can record 4K60 video, where on the 15 Pro Max, we also have a 12 megapixel camera at f1.9. Again, 4K60, but you can record in ProRes as well. On the S23 Ultra, we have some really nice rear cameras, 200 megapixel f1.7, 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, a 10 megapixel f2.4 telephoto three times optical zoom, as well as a 10 megapixel telephoto 10x optical zoom. We can record 8K at 30 frames per second, 4K at 30 or 60 frames per second in HDR10+. The 15 Pro Max has a 48 megapixel f1.78 camera along with a 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide and a 12 megapixel f2.8 five times optical zoom. So they've added an optical zoom that's greater than what we had before in the 15 Pro Max and we'll compare those in just a moment. However, we do have more options for things such as ProRes. We can record 4K60 HDR ProRes as long as you have an external drive. We have macro action mode and most of these features are on both phones with the exception of ProRes and a couple other things such as action mode, which Samsung has different names for, but they do the same thing. So they're very comparable. So let's go ahead and take a look at some photos and videos and see which ones you think look best. This is the forward facing camera from the S23 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. It gives you an idea of what it can do as far as dynamic range in the background and also what it sounds like based on the microphones from both the S23 Ultra here and the 15 Pro Max here. Let me know which one you think looks best and sounds best in the comments below. Now, as far as the overall specs, the experience will vary depending on what the specs are as well. But in the S23 Ultra, we have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 specifically made for the S23 Ultra with 8 or 12 gigs of RAM. With the 15 Pro Max, we have the A17 Pro with 8 gigs of RAM. Now, if we go into our storage settings, I'll show you that. You'll see here that on the S23 Ultra, we have 500 gigs of storage. 
and we have one terabyte on the iPhone 15 pro max. And then memory here, we have 12 gigs of Ram. So the overall Ram depends on how much storage you have on the Android side. And that's typically what a lot of Android phones actually offer where the 15 pro max, all of them, 15 pro 15 pro max are eight gigs of Ram. Now, as far as the overall experience or speed, well, we have Android 14 with one UI six on the S 23 ultra. It's a feature pack update that's super smooth, pretty refined and generally stable overall. It's a newer release. And depending on what you're doing, of course, will add to the overall experience, but you can fully customize this or just leave it alone. So not only do you have themes and widgets and settings, you have additional apps from Samsung where you can fully customize this however you want. I've left it pretty simple as I sort of like the stock layouts and default looks, but in general, you could really customize this with theme park, sound assistant, all, good lock, all sorts of other things. And that's one advantage you have with Android and S 23 ultra. You have a lot more customization there. Of course, we have iOS 17 on the iPhone 15 pro max and the overall home screen looks pretty similar to what we've had before, except we have some widgets. We can customize our lock screen. Of course, that's something we've had for a while. If I can bring down the screen here, the lock screen, we can fully customize this and you'll see both of them have always on displays. If I lock this as well. However, I would argue sometimes that the always on display on the Samsung device is a little nicer. However, I've tried to actually match both of these. So they look similar. So you'll see both of them have a dark screen, but you can show the wallpaper as well on the 15 pro max. Now, as far as the overall speed and usability of them, both are very similar. As far as that goes, depending on what you're doing. Launching apps is going to be similar. So if we open the camera, you'll see here, they both open quickly. So again, if we go back in, they open at about the same rate. It just depends what you're doing. It's going to be within a half a second or so of one another. But if we try some different apps, let's first go into a benchmarking app. Then we'll take a look at some of the other things, web browsing and racing as well with a game. So if we go over to Geekbench here on both of them, we'll go into that and we'll run a CPU bench benchmark here. So we'll go into run CPU benchmark and let's see what we get. While we wait for the benchmarks to complete here in just a moment, let's take a look at the overall temperature on the 15 pro max at the hottest point. We have about 98.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the S 23 ultra, we have about 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So both are pretty warm and that can depend on how they're venting out the overall temperatures. But it seems that the S 23 ultra handles higher temperatures longer and has less issues with them. So we'll wait for the 15 pro max to complete here. And both have completed. And as you can see, we have 1,963 for single core on the S 23 ultra compared to 2,959 on the 15 pro max again with multi-core on the S 23 ultra 5,137 compared to 7,189 on the 15 pro max, a pretty significant difference in numbers, but not necessarily in usability. And one thing I wanted to mention is both of these phones, while they're warm on the displays, you can barely feel that overall temperature temperature and both of the backs are nice and cool. Despite us having a skin on the back, that could be some of the increase in temperature on the front display, but I really feel no heat coming off either or on the frames whatsoever. Now, if we go into the camera, like I said before, let's go in and go into the camera and what I'll do is I'll set this up. We'll go into video modes here, make sure they're fairly equal. We've got UHD 60. Let's switch to 60 frames per second and we'll turn off ProRes on this. We should have similar settings on both and then we'll just record for about 10 minutes and see what we've got. So we'll come back. Everything seems to be about the same here. They're on standard settings. Let's go ahead and hit record and we'll come back at the 10 minute mark. And so I'll just put some cases underneath it just to sort of show that you're holding it. You've got some of the area covered with your hand and there we go. So let's see what we get after about 10 minutes. I've been recording 4k 60 video for a little over 10 minutes and on the iPhone 15 pro max, we're at about 103 degrees or 104 degrees. Now Fahrenheit on the S 23 ultra, we're at around 104 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's take a look at the back of them while we're still recording. We'll flip them over here. 
and again on the 15 Pro Max. And if you haven't noticed already, I'm putting the Celsius marks in the upper right here. You'll see 104 to 106 degrees Fahrenheit on the 15 Pro Max. And on the S23 Ultra in the hottest spot, about 106 to 107 degrees Fahrenheit. So very, very similar results as far as that goes, but that doesn't mean they'll handle regular tasks after this normally. So we'll go ahead and stop the video and let's go ahead and swipe home. Both don't feel terribly hot. They feel a little warm on the outside here. And then on the front, of course, there is some heat coming off of them, but let's go into a game and see how they handle that after they've sort of been heat soaked for a little while. So if we go into games here, we'll slide these aside, see how fast they load here and we'll set them both down and let's go ahead and load real racing. So we'll go into real racing three, see how long they take to load on both of them. They're starting at a, We're in a little bit faster on the 15 Pro Max. The S23 Ultra is still loading. Maybe that's because it's heat soaked. I'm not sure. I've never run this test before. So we'll go ahead and turn the volume down on both. And we're still waiting. So it is taking a little bit longer on the S23 Ultra here. However, there should be better cooling in general on the S23 Ultra. So both have loaded now. Let's go ahead and wait for it. We'll go in. We'll go and enter a game. Let's go ahead and tap race. We'll see how long it takes. And now the results are similar. The S23 Ultra was slightly faster, but it just depends on when I tapped go, but you'll see the overall game here itself. And we're in different views, but we're in and it's going. So that's pretty similar here. Let's switch camera angles here or camera modes. And let's just let it run again and see how it goes after running this for a little bit. So we've only got lap one of one. We'll have to go out and then do it again, but I'll try this for a few minutes. And at the time right now, it's 1.13. So we'll give it just a moment, try it for about 10 minutes, and we'll see what the overall temperatures are like. Now, as I'm playing this game, I've noticed some frame rate lag on the 15 Pro Max. Now it's hard to show this side by side, but it gives you an idea that both seem to be okay most of the time, but sometimes there's a little bit of sort of stuttering on the 15 Pro Max when I'm turning side to side. The Yes 23 Ultra definitely feels smoother in this particular game. Now that could just be game optimizations for the current processors, but either way, the S23 Ultra seems to make this a smoother experience despite the A17 Pro being faster in the 15 Pro Max. Now we've had about eight minutes of this gaming. Let's go ahead and see what the overall temperatures are. So I'll just leave it like that and bring in the thermal camera. And as you can see, as we're playing the 15 pro max here, it's at about 91 degrees or 92 degrees on the front. And then on the S 23 ultra, let it calibrate here for a second on the S 23 ultra, we're at about 95 degrees to 96 degrees on the front. However, if we flip these over, let's see if the, even though we're disadvantaged with the S 23, it seems to be handling heat a little bit better, but in the hottest point, we're at about almost 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And then on the S or on the 15 pro max, we're at about 94 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the frame rates seem to be smoother and more consistent on the S 23 ultra, at least with that game. Now, one game is not really going to show us regular performance on everything, but in general, I was pretty impressed that the S 23 kept up that way. Now, as far as something simple, like a web browser, if we go in and maybe load Apple here. Now, if we go to load a website here, we'll just go in Chrome versus iOS and it could have been saved here. But if we go into learn more, the S 23 ultra was surprisingly quicker there. As far as smoothness, you can see the actual animation speed of scrolling is faster on the S 23, but that's not necessarily a slowness issue on the 15 pro max. That just means the animations have been sped up, but right there you can see it looks good, but the S 23 definitely has the feeling of being smoother just because it's 120 Hertz frame rate is always consistent. It seems, but again, I typically use an iPhone, so I'm just showing you my observations here. So that gives you an idea overall. Now, as far as using these in the future, well, both of them should have support for at least about three years, at least for new software updates, depending on what Samsung does. 
They seem to be sort of pushing out closer to five and seven years with the pixel. So we'll have to see how long they're supported for. Samsung is supporting their devices longer and longer. Now, if you're wondering which one you should decide between, well, we do have the S pen on the S 23 ultra. Now I found this is not something I personally would ever use, but it is a nice remote. If you want to use it for a camera, take a family picture. And if you do take notes with a stylus, this is great to use. I don't typically prefer this, but if you do, it's available and it's great to use with all of its features. You can select things, select something on the screen. You've got smart select to crop and you can write and draw on this. So if you're someone that draws a lot with a pencil, this might be perfect for you. If you don't care about the stylus, of course, that's not going to factor into your decision. But if you're wondering which one you should choose, well, I would say the iPhone probably has better software support over time. However, the experiences are very similar depending on the ecosystem you're part of. If you've got a lot of different Apple devices, an Apple watch, an iPad, and a Mac, your general experience will be better on the iPhone just because you've got airdrop and everything Thing sort of works seamlessly. While Samsung has a lot of those similar features with their own sort of software updates, if you have a Galaxy Tab, a Galaxy TV, or a Samsung TV, and all of their different things, such as the Samsung Watch and more, again, it may be much better to use the Samsung. It just really depends which one works best for you. My entire family actually uses iPhones except for one person, and that makes iMessage sort of essential along with Find My and other Apple apps. However, if they didn't, I could easily use the S23 Ultra and be very happy with it. Both feel built very solidly. They both have great cameras that perform a little bit differently depending on the situation, but I'm really happy with either one of them. Let me know which one you would choose in the comments below, and hopefully this helped you decide which one is best for you. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.